What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone. So today, uh, we have something kind of fun. Um, oftentimes, I don't know what he's barking about. Nothing exciting is happening. Um, so, oftentimes we obviously focus on the guitar itself. That's what we focus on around here. And um, much to the dismay of the amp lovers and etc. cetera. Uh, but you know, that's kind of my specialty around here, obviously, is the pickup thing and the signal chain through the guitar itself. But what I think a lot of people don't think about because we have, in most guitars anyway, that are passive, uh, you know, basically what that means is we pluck the string, hang on. We pluck the string and the coil uh, generates electricity. That's basically what it is. It's a backwards electric motor. However, um, the most potential for signal in a passive circuit, uh, what's the easiest way to explain this, is right here. Uh, everything after this, in fact, including the way the pickup is constructed itself, the type of cover that it has on it, the type of wire that it's made out of, um, can only give you a particular potential for um, the voltage, the frequency range of that voltage, the structure of the voltage, which is the tone of the pickup, right? all happens right here. Everything you add after that uh, takes away from that. So every time you put another pot in the guitar, so if you put four, if you put a, a volume tone versus a volume, volume tone, volume tone, tone, depending on how it's set up in the guitar, um, I call those, uh, like a tone is a parasitic circuit. It actually just steals from the original signal that you have here. Same thing with our, that's why we have different values of pots. So 250, 500, 1000, uh, one meg. Uh, that's why we have different values of pots. That's why we put time into making all those choices because everything sort of takes away from the signal in the guitar, right? One of the things that we don't think about is how the signal gets to the amp. So it actually, when we think about things that take away from the potential signal of the guitar, the guitar cable is part of that because there's nothing amplifying signal until we get to our first amp. Now, our first amp could be a tuner with a buffer in it that's on all the time, a boost pedal or a compressor that's on all the time, anything that is some sort of amplifier or boost or buffer uh, once, if that's on all the time, then you don't need to worry after that because it's being amplified, right? It's now it's into the amplifier type of it's, it's on that side of it. That's like the aft side, but everything up to that point where it leaves the guitar to the first amplified signal, buffered, boosted signal is stealing from the tone of the guitar. And so cables are really important because uh, cables, they just, they steal tone. It's, it's in their nature. Um, okay. What's the best way to explain this? Hang on. Okay. So anytime you have this wire laying next to this wire. Okay. So if we have, uh, we have our signal here on this side and we have our ground on this side, this is the way a uh, guitar cable is made. So the signal side, that's gonna be the tip of the cable. And then this is gonna be the ring of the cable, okay? And so the shielding internally of the cable is the ground, and that's actually going to the ground in the amp. The signal is going within it, and usually it's like a, uh, it's like this and the shield is on the outside out here like so and that is our ground okay and then there's like some sort of insulation here and then we have the core in here which is that's our signal line okay and here's what happens in all electricity it happens in pickups it happens in everything that when you have the signal line laying next to the ground, there is some like, I'm gonna hold my pen at the right angle for it to work. Uh, there is some crosstalk. You know, let's, let's draw this a little wider so we have room in here. Whoops. 
looking through the camera and I'm not knowing which way I'm holding my pen. So if this is the ground side and this is the signal side, there's crosstalk that happens between here. And basically what's happening is signal is being bled from this side to the ground. And anytime we bleed signal from signal to ground, whether that be in a volume pot, a tone pot, or in the cable, uh, you lose high frequency response. The longer the cable is, the more this happens. So cable design, the design of this like foamy insulation stuff that goes in here, the structure of the center here and the type of shielding here all matters in a cable. And the longer the cable is, like I said, the distance from the pickup here, so I keep holding my pen backwards. So the, the pickup is here, right? And your first, let's say your tuner with your, um, with your buffer on all the time. So let's say it's a boss TU3 because those, those have a buffer in them and a lot of people use them. Okay. So you've got your boss TU3 there between your first pickup or for your last pickup and your boss TU3, this loss of signal is happening. Okay. Um, there's been a bunch of math done over time and nerds have figured this out and it really starts to compound at about 18 and a half feet. Okay. So if you have a 10 foot cable, you may not notice this as much. If you have a 15 foot cable, you may not notice this as much. Um, but the longer it gets, the more you'll notice it. The other thing is honestly, the better your pickups, the better your guitar is, um, the more it matters because remember we're actually bleeding away whoops because remember we're bleeding away high frequencies first so if you have real muddy pickups if you have something that's not super quality you may not notice um that hey buddy you want to play with the ball right now or do you want to wait till later let's wait till later okay Okay. So if you've got a quality rig, you know, you got a good guitar, you got a good amp, you don't want it cheap out on your cable. If you've got a very inexpensive guitar, the pickups are kind of flat sounding anyway. Um, then there's a couple of ways to look at this. One is the cable can make it worse and you're not getting the most potential out of your guitar, no matter what guitar it is, cheap or expensive. Or you could look at it like, well, I'm not going to notice the difference anyway because I don't have the ear for it. Because it's not in every situation, but it's just in most situations that you will be able to tell a big difference. So if you remember, I don't know, if you're super OGs of the channel, you remember a few years ago, um, we, used to, we used to carry cables. Uh, I, I loved making cables. We made lots of them. But then we sold our house, we moved into the motorhome, and I ended up not having a, a, a way to store them. It's very heavy, that sort of stuff. And for a long time, I didn't have any, even any cables to recommend. I don't like Mogami's. I don't like, there was a bunch of other designer ones out on the, I, they're just not that great. Um, until I found Runway Audio in Nashville. And so for those of you that remember, these cables right here um, are the ones that I've been using uh, for the last couple years. And what I like about them is they are 20 picofarads per foot. What that means is the capacitance of the cable. So the amount of signal that gets lost from the center to the ground is 20 picofarads per foot of capacitance is the lowest spec on the market in a cable that's even close to being affordable. Now you can get really super high end stuff that costs hundreds of dollars, but this stuff does not cost hundreds of dollars. Um, it sounds freaking fantastic. It is probably some of the best, well, it is, in my opinion, the best cable on the market. Uh, lifetime warranty on their regular ends, two-year warranty on their silent ends. Um, I really like this TechFlex stuff. So here's the cool part about this TechFlex stuff, watch. When you throw it on the ground, it just, it just lays flat, right? Like no matter what you do, if you just, this is what I like about it. It's stiff, yes, but it lays flat, like no matter what you do. Um, I, I really like it. It coils up like this every time you coil it up, no matter what. And it's tough enough 
that if you like run an amp caster over it or something, you're not, you're not gonna do any damage to it. And if you do, tell Austin and they'll fix it. Um, but I know for sure that they don't really have that much stuff come back on warranty. Um, yeah, this stuff is awesome. This is not why I'm making this video though. I have something much cooler than this. if you remember uh, but if you're a subscriber to the channel you, you know you have access to that little community tab uh, that we post on from time to time and do little surveys and various things like that um, the cable that you just saw obviously says Dylan talks tone on one end and it says runway audio on the other this is an exclusive colorway chosen by you uh, those of you that participated there was I don't know thousand or a couple thousand, I don't remember. There was a lot of people that participated in the, uh, the survey to, to pick a color. This is an exclusive colorway to Dylan Talks Tone. You can only get this on dylantalkstone.com uh, with the red here and the, they call it carbon. You know, my racing heritage and my go fast heritage that we have all through all of our pickup names and all that kind of stuff. Um, Kind of, kind of comes through to this. So what's really funny is I was like, why are people just choosing gray? Drives me nuts. We have all these cool colors that we could choose from. I'm just gonna admit to you right now I was wrong and you are right. And this is one of the most attractive looking guitar cables I have ever seen. And I am super stoked that you picked this color. So thank you for not listening to me and getting snakeskin or some other crazy checkerboard color and going with something very cool. It looks very premium, but at the same time, it uh, doesn't, it's not flashy, but it's very premium. It obviously feels premium like his other cables, but it just looks a step up. Here's the cool part. These are available on our website. Runway Audio is actually going to fulfill uh, the orders. So that means that you have all the options available. So you have silent plug uh, in the straight side available. You have 90, you have gold, you have black, you have all that. Now the colorway of the cable is not going to change, but this, you will be able to get all of the options, all of the lengths, all of that kind of stuff. And they will fulfill it there in Nashville. They're actually going to make them to your order and fulfill them. Um, we ran a test little thing, pre-test thing on Patreon. This system works phenomenally. And I will tell you that uh, Austin was shipping those orders like the next day. So um, it's very, very cool. This whole idea is super cool. It's something that I've wanted to do for a long time is have an exclusive to Dylan Talks Tone product. And Austin is such a great guy there at Runway Audio that I was like, I can't think of anybody else and anything more important to your guitar signal that we don't handle. You know, we don't do cables here anymore, but I, he's the only one I trust to do this. And so it was really fun to be able to partner with him. And this is not the last thing that you're gonna see from Runway Audio on our site. I've got a couple of other things up my sleeve um, because of the techie fiddly nature that all of us are have about guitars I've got another thing coming so uh, stay tuned hit the subscribe button uh, thanks for hanging out and talking to me about cables today this is super cool I'm really excited about it 
Uh, up until yesterday, this was the only one in existence, and now there are many, many out in the... But everybody on Patreon, lots of people on Patreon um, already have ordered them, and so I hope you get to order yours as well. Thanks for hanging out. Enjoy the exclusive to Dylan Talks Tone runway audio cable, and we will talk to you in the next video.